Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Again, I've been missing for weeks. I was at camp and then I ended up with COVID. So uh, um, it's been three weeks since I've been here in worship with you. So it feels good to be back. However, um, I thought I was just going to be the worship leader this morning, and I got a phone call at 6.15, and Pastor Tom is sick, so you're stuck with me this morning, and I'll just apologize ahead of time, but God is good. God goes before us, and he, he is good. I mean, so hopefully we have a beautiful worship experience this morning. I'd also like to welcome our listening and viewing audience this morning. All right, announcements. There's a few to go through. I'm sure this has been in here for a few weeks, but I'll personally thank you for all of your donations. The milk jugs we used to build boats at camp, and um, you gave me embroidery thread, and our middle school campers used up just about all of it for making their craft during the week of camp. So thank you for your donations. The pictures of those experiences are on our Facebook page, so take a, take a peek at those. On Wednesday, we are going to Valley Fair. We're leaving at 6.45, and... Uh, coming back at 9.30. If you have not signed up, you still can. There's a little more room, so get your forms turned into Levi. If you're a sixth or seventh grader, we just ask that you bring a chaperone to every four kids. And this year, both the um, theme park and the water park are open to us. So if you wanna be in the water park, please bring a swimsuit and stuff for that. <coughs> If you have any other questions, please contact Levi. Seasoned Citizens will take place on Thursday. They are doing their annual summer picnic, but it's going to be at Hartford this year. Um, they will meet here and leave at the church at 9.30. And uh, a picnic lunch is gonna be provided and Bob Frank is going to give pontoon rides. So come be a part of that, that'll be fun. Next Sunday, our youth are going to share about our St. Louis mission trip, and uh, it was a great trip, so come hear about that. You will be encouraged. Vacation Bible School will kick off next Sunday as well. So uh, it goes Sunday through Thursday from five to eight in the evenings. And speaking of that, we start out with a meal at five o'clock. And so we have donation sheets that I'm gonna pass around to each side. Um, they're different lists, but if you wanna donate towards the food for VBS, I will give you the opportunity to please sign up for that and, uh, and help out that way if you would. I'm still looking for volunteers as well. If you would like to help lead a crew of kids around, I'll take your help or I, we have stations that we rotate to. So if you would like to help with the stations, I'm still looking for a few helpers there also. Um, there will be no book club for the month of July and Eric Holmquist is looking for volunteers to help with the Life Flight event um, for Friday night. There is a concert happening. Um, I totally lost his name. It's going to be a really good concert. If I come up with it, I'll, I'll remember his name. He's got really good songs, but he'll be there on Friday night for Farley Fest. So come be a part of that. And then you will see there is an insert for the Find Your People book study. We did the video study, but there's a book that goes along with it, so they are starting that August 1st. So that was super good. Come be a part of that. I think that's all I have for announcements today. I also want to encourage you to please take the blue um, folders out of your pews and fill out the Connect cards. They help us know that you are here, and if you have any prayer concerns, please feel free to share those with us. 
then I invite you to please stand and greet one another in Christian love this morning. I invite you to please just take a moment to center your hearts for worship this morning. Please join me in a responsive call to worship. We have neighbors all around us hurting and weak. Remind us that you call us to serve those who need help. As your people, give us the courage to reach out to those who are hurting and give us strength to serve our neighbors who are weak. Remind us that we can make a difference in our neighbors' lives by the power of the Holy Spirit that dwells in us. As we worship you this morning, God, may we remember who we are, followers of Jesus Christ. Whose we are, we are yours. Who we are to serve all of our neighbors. Please remain standing for our opening hymn, Sweet, Sweet Spirit. The words are found in the hymnal on page 334 or up on the screen. Please join me in our unison opening prayer. O oh Lord, we come humbly as your servants in praise and worship of you. As your servants, we ask that we may know and understand the things we need to and have the grace and courage to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I 
I invite you to please bow your heads and join me in prayer this morning. Oh, holy and loving Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to gather together this morning and worship you. Lord, may we have hearts that long to worship you, not only in your, in your house, but each and every moment of our lives. There are so many ways that you bless us. You bless us with beautiful sunshine and rain. You bless us with joy and sorrow. You bless us um, in so many ways. So help us to look for your blessings, to have eyes to see where you are at work. And we thank you that you are at work and you always go before us. Lord, there are so many, though, that who are suffering and are hurting this morning. So we just pray that your mighty hand is upon them in their place of pain and hurt. We lift up Mariah, Amber Lamp's sister, as she has suffered some sort of cardiac event. We just pray that you are with this young mother, that you can restore life and hope into her body and that you be with her family and encourage them through this time. We lift up Roseanne Wolschlager as she is dealing with health issues as well. Lord, may your hand be upon her. May she know your presence. May you comfort her and uh, assure her that you are with her. We pray for um, Morgan Schmidt and ask that you continue to be with her as she um, enjoys that new baby and uh, help her to recover after the birth and, and give her your peace and assurance and guidance as she raises that little bundle of joy. We praise you that Matthew is recovering well, that his surgery went well, and that um, things are going really well for him. Lord, thank you for that. We lift up Mike Zanuski as he faces his battle against leukemia. And we also lift up Harlan Bone as he continues to undergo his treatment to face his cancer. Lord, uh, just encourage them, strengthen them, and, and help them to enjoy each and every moment. Because you are with them and you are for them. And uh, you love them deeply, Lord. May they know that. Lord, we also lift up those who grieve. There are so many in our community right now who are grieving devastating loss. And we pray that you wrap them in your almighty arms of love and that they feel your comfort and peace and they are led from a place of hope because you give us the gift of eternal life. We pray especially for the family and friends of Judy Anderson, Elvina Berger, Valeria Pond, and Myra Schmeek. Lord, we lift up all of those who are on our prayer list and any needs that go unspoken among us. You are the God who um, is with us, who is for us, who cares about every detail of our lives. And we just pray that they know that you are with them, leading and guiding and loving every step of the way. We lift up Pastor Tom to you, Lord. We pray that you heal him as he has not been feeling well for a few days and we just pray that you go before us and the activities that we have planned lord bring forth the people to help with those activities and uh, we just pray that we can have fun and fellowship and learn and grow in you in these days and weeks ahead Lord, continue to work in and through this worship service and help us to experience you. Your presence is welcome and we want to know and love you more and deeper. 
So now we ask that you lead us in the prayer you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to please join in singing, Great is the Lord. It's found in the faith we sing on page 2022, where the words are up on the screen. So, the scripture lesson is going to be different this morning. Um, when I was working, I went to the um, confirmation retreats with the, the kids this last year, and there was one, um, <laughs> there was an exercise that we did as a group where we were supposed to look up scripture um, like in concordances and find out what the meaning was behind the scripture. And so while the kids were doing that, I did it as well. And I was doing it on the 23rd Psalms. And I found this article that was so good and so meaningful to me. And I thought, oh, this stuff preaches. And, um, <laughs> and, this last week, um, I ended up being involved in a funeral that um, it was not on my radar. I never in a million dreams 
thought that I would be involved in this funeral and uh, I didn't really want to preach the message, but I prayed about it and I felt like the Lord said, yes, Christy, I'm calling you to do this. And I'm like, okay, God, if you're going to call me to this, you got to call me through it because I can't do this on my own. And I had no idea what to say to this family and community in regards to this. And I walked out of here done praying and I walked through the office and I heard him say Psalm 23. And so I'm like, okay, you've given me a message. And I remember reading that from the confirmation retreat that I had found this article. And I'm like, how in the world am I gonna find that again? Because it's hard to Google, you know, when you need to find something, you can never Google it and find it again. But I opened my phone up and I had left that tab open and it was there for me. So God went before me totally and I like was physically shaking before I could go in and do that message. Like I was a mess. But when I went in to do it, presence of God was with me and dear friends covered me in prayer and God was with me <laughs> and I had an experience that I told Pastor Kent about afterwards and he said Christy I've done this for 37 years and no one has ever done that to me <laughs> so I always have a funny story with all of the things that I do and I'm not going to share that story with you here but uh Oh, goodness, if you ask me in private, I'll share it with you. <clears throat> anyway, so God is so good. So um, my message is, I'm just going to adapt the message that I shared because I got the phone call bright and early this morning and didn't know where else to go today <laughs> to share with you. So bear with me. I think there's good things um, to share with you this morning in this scripture. So I'm going to invite you to please grab your hymnals and turn to page 754. And let us read the 23rd Psalm together. <clears throat> These are sweet, sweet words that David has written. Again, that's page 754. Please join me. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters, restores my life, leads me in right paths for the sake of the Lord's name. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord as long as I live. I'm going to invite the kids to come forward. Is Lily the only one that I noticed? Do you want to come up? No, you're not going to come join me? I'll make it worth your while. <laughs> no? Okay. That's okay. It's a lot of pressure to come up. So we can skip the children's message. <clears throat> unless someone, unless an adult wants to volunteer. But that's okay. All right. So I'm just going to take a few minutes to... Um, Break down the 23rd Psalms, because these words are so, so good, so dear. Um, 
the Lord is my shepherd. David wrote these words and he started out as a shepherd boy. So he knew the job of the shepherd. The shepherd feeds, the shepherd guides, the shepherd protects the sheep. The shepherd's job is an intimate job. It's a hands-on job. The shepherd always has to have his eyes on the sheep. Otherwise, they tend to do silly things. And um, I was doing some research on how sheep behave, and it's scary, the parallels between sheep and humanity. Um, so, so sheep do best as a herd. Their protection is to be in a herd. And they behave as a herd. So I was reading the story of a farmer who um, went to leave his sheep out of the barn and he laid, or there was a rope across the doorway. So the first couple of sheep had to jump over the rope to get out of the barn. And the farmer was noticing that, so he got rid of the rope. But every other sheep that went out of the barn had to jump, even though there was no rope to jump. That is the behavior of sheep. And we as humans tend to do the same thing. If we hear something that sounds like a good idea, we follow suit. And sometimes that's okay, but a lot of times we should really be asking questions like, why is that person doing that? And why am I following in their footsteps? It doesn't make sense sometimes. So it is important that we question what kind of sheep we're following and we should follow the sheep that lead us to the shepherd. Sheep um, are emotional animals. I did not know this about sheep, but they are very emotional. And they will not rest unless there are certain things fulfilled for them. They need to be fed and they need to be assured that their next meal is coming. <clears throat> Otherwise, they can't sleep. If there is fighting or bickering among the herd, they won't sleep. If they have parasites or flies bugging them, they can't sleep. They need reassurance to be able to rest. Sheep, if they end up on their backs with their feet in the air, are incapable of getting themselves back on their own feet. They need someone to come along and lift them up and set them on their feet again. Sheep cannot heal themselves. You know, some animals will lick their wounds or whatever. Sheep do not have the skills to do that. They need a shepherd to tend to their wounds or to the flies or to the parasites. And sheep have great, great value to the shepherd. The shepherd invests a lot of time and energy and emotion in the sheep. So when David says, the Lord is my shepherd, he knows what that means. He knows what sheep need. He knows what the shepherd does to care for the sheep. And it is a beautiful picture. So he can declare, I shall not want. He is completely assured that the good shepherd will take care of everything that he needs. He goes on to paint a picture of how the shepherd meets those needs. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still and quiet waters. He refreshes and restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. 
sometimes in life we get to the point where we're weary and we are worn and we need times in green pastures. We need to set aside time to be able to rest and restore and God wants that for us. And uh, I'm sure all of us have different pictures of what a green pasture would look like for us. I mean, some people are mountain people. Other people like me are ocean people. I love the water. I love anything with the water. I love to be on the water, by the water, on top of the water. It doesn't matter um, for me. But... There are places that we go to that we can find that place where we just kind of go, oh, this is okay. And God wants that for us. He leads me beside the still and quiet waters. So personally, I'm an ocean girl. I love everything about the ocean. And um, for me, the pounding of the waves like helped me to sleep really well or to be on a boat on the ocean, that rocking motion is just so relaxing. Other people, like my boys, they don't like it because they end up seasick. But um, So it's not for everybody. <clears throat> but the one thing about the ocean is it's always tossing and turning. It's very rare. I, I went to Cancun and there I was so disappointed because it was still. I laid on a hammock and that was wonderful, but like um, the ocean for the most part is very turbulent and we go through times in our lives where we feel so turbulent inside, don't we? I mean, our stomachs are just churning and we pace and we just don't um, come from a good place. So here it's saying that he leads me beside the still and quiet waters. When I, I like to go kayaking on the lake and when it is still, that's my favorite time to just be out on that still lake. And I love to just run my fingertips through the water and it brings such incredible peace. And when you think about a still body of water and how it reflects the glory of God and his creation, you know, you can see the sky and the trees reflected in that still water. And if you're brave enough, you can peer over and see yourself in that clear water. And God wants you to take the time to see yourself as he sees you, as his beloved child. And he wants to lead you to that peace that passes understanding. So if you're in that turbulent place in your life, go to the lake if you can find a non-windy day or run, run a bath. Sit in some still water and just allow the peace of God to wash over you and still and quiet those turbulent times because he really does want to refresh and restore your soul. He leads us down good paths because he wants to be glorified in and through us. You know, when we are encouraged and following him in his right and holy paths, he's glorified in that. And we are called to live out lives that glorify him. And uh, he meets all of our needs beautifully so that we can do that. Then we get to the part that's not so fun. Even though I walk through the sunless valley, we all have times where we walk through dark valleys. It is just part of life. We have mountaintop experiences, and then we get phone calls that devastate us, and we get bad news, and we, we suffer and we hurt in those valleys. But it says that we walk through the valleys. God 
gives us valid times in our lives. I'm not saying he causes the pain or the upset, but he uses those times to minister to us, to heal us, to bring us to restoration. And sometimes we need those valid times to grieve the loss or the news or the different way of life. And uh, we need permission to shed the tears and to acknowledge that we hurt and we suffer. And God is with us in and through those valley times. It says though that we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And I love the wording of that because when you think about a shadow, a shadow has no power. A shadow is where the light is blocked and it represents something and we can guess at what it might be representing. But a shadow is powerless. And we as Christians get to live in the knowledge that death is powerless for us. We, as people of Jesus Christ, who have accepted him as our Lord and Savior, get to walk from life to eternal life. And death has no power because God sent his son into the world to be born as that helpless babe, to walk among us. He, knew, he knows exactly what we go through. He went through mountaintop experiences and he walked through valleys with people. He healed, he restored, he knows what we go through. He understands us so deeply. And he came to seek the lost. And we have a lot of people who are hurting and lost in our community, who are suffering greatly right now. And they need to experience the love of Christ. With the funeral that I was involved in, there was a high school student that went to this family and he said, my church is gonna take care of you. They had never walked through the doors of the church, but he assured them they would take care of him and his, his family. He was, he was confident so his church stepped up and they surrounded this family with a community of love and support. And um, they fed them, they loved on them. It was beautiful. And there's so many people who are hurting who need you to step up and be the hands and feet of Christ. So let us have eyes to see the hurting around us as they are going through their valleys. Cause I can imagine going through hard times in life without the hope of Jesus Christ. And if we don't share that with one another, they are walking without that hope. And we need to step up and be the hope. Because Jesus died in our place. We all fall short. And he took our place, he covers our sins. And everyone needs to know that he loves us without condemnation. I mean, I have gone to the Lord so many times because I've messed up and I'm expecting him to like, get, get even with me because I kind of deserve it a lot of the time. But I have never experienced that with God. He has always met me with compassion and mercy and love and forgiveness. And because he died and he rose again, there is no power in death. So we can walk through these valleys because we know that death is powerless thanks to the grace and love and mercy of our loving Lord. It continues, I fear no evil. We do not have to fear evil, but evil is 
a true part of our world. Satan is out there to kill, to steal, and destroy. But Jesus came as the way, the truth, and the life. So we have to choose the shepherd that we are going to lead. And it will determine what we focus on and what we may experience. So we do not have to fear evil because our good shepherd is with us. He has his rod to protect us from the enemy, his staff to guide us as we walk through this life. And they are there to comfort and to console us. And we can be confident like David was in these words. It continues with blessings. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed and refreshed my head with oil. My cup overflows. God has good things for us. He, can you imagine the day when we get to all sit together at his holy table and celebrate in his presence and really feel and bask in his unconditional love? We can do that here as well. We have the gift of the Holy Spirit who is with us and blesses us with so many things so that our cups overflow. And if we live as people with overflowing cups, we could change the world because we would lead from a place of hope and of love and of mercy, just like our good shepherd leads. He fills our cups to overflowing. And we have this promise. Surely goodness and mercy and unfailing love shall follow me all of the days of my life. Now this doesn't mean that every day is going to be a good day. But we have his goodness and his mercy and his unfailing love with us every day. And we shall dwell forever in the house and the presence of the Lord. This is good news, people. This is hope. This speaks, doesn't it? Let's pray. Holy and loving God, we thank you that you are the good shepherd. We thank you that you lead us, that you guide us that you have your eyes and hands upon us, that you are present in our lives. Lord, help us to seek you, to be open to your protection, to be willing to walk where you guide us, and uh, fill our cups so that we can overflow with your love and mercy to those around us and share the light and the hope of who you are. Help us to be your hands and feet. Lord, we praise you and we pray these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I invite you to please join in singing Breathe on Me, Breath of God, found in the hymnal on page 420.
Please join me in a unison affirmation of faith. We belong to God, eternal and infinite, creator of all things and all that is to come. We follow Christ who comes to us from God and reveals God to us. He heals people and transforms lives and calls us to join in his ministry. He was crucified, died, and was raised again by God, and reigns over all creation, and he bids us to die and rise with him in the service of the healing of the world. We are moved by the Holy Spirit together with the communion of saints as members of the body of Christ, God's holy universal church. We are confident in the forgiveness, the power of the resurrection, and the reality of eternal life. In all things, it is our desire to follow Christ by the grace of the Holy Spirit for God's glory. Amen. At this time, we invite the ushers to come forward to receive the morning's tithes and offering. Please join me in our unison offertory prayer. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. We are so grateful that we can always count on you. Out of your abundance and great mercy, you have given us so much. And so we give you this offering today. With it, we worship you and give our whole selves to you. Take it now and use it for your kingdom and your glory. Reach and influence we pray. May it be a great blessing to many. We ask all this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Please remain standing for a closing hymn, El Shaddai, in the hymnal on page 124.
forth as people who have a great shepherd, knowing that his goodness and mercy and unfailing love will follow you all the days of your lives. Amen.